Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear heart. Happy birthday to you. Hi, fiends. Thanks for joining me on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. And you know that this December is a celebration of Art the Clown. 15 years of Art the Clown. And who would we want to talk to more than Art the Clown? Follow me. David! Hey! It's been forever! Hey! I know, it's been a while. I know. For a while we were doing this during COVID so regular. <laughs> yeah. Then I got busy. <laughs> yes, you did. Just a little bit. Just a little. Just a little. So it's been about a year since we mm -hmm. talked and Terra Fur 2 had just been released. Yeah. How has life changed for you other than the very long convention lines at horror conventions? Ah, uh, definitely, definitely better, you know, it just, it's been a whirlwind of a past year. This past year has flown by because it's just one thing after another, just zipping around everywhere, you know, it just been working on some other projects, of course, doing conventions and stuff like that too, gearing up for Terrifier 3 as well. So I, I've been having fun. It, it, it has, life has to be hilarious to you now, like going to <laughs> stores or anywhere and seeing like pictures of your face um yeah <laughs> that's weird <laughs> i've actually thought I... that at monster mania so much like all of the terrifier class play i thought that has to be kind of strange and kind of funny you know <laughs> yeah it, it, it's even weirder when i'm actually like in like a mall or something like that and i go into like hot topic or something like that and there's me and i'm like whoa what no <laughs> it's one thing to see that you know you know that stuff at conventions because you had the vendors and stuff like that but to actually be in like the real world setting and seeing your own merchandise is pretty pretty surreal <laughs> <laughs> so since the release of the terrifier 3 trailer take note of my awesome poster there of which i didn't get you to sign but i have to <laughs> um, one day one day it shall happen. We've yes. seen Santa art or art claws cosplayers and <laughs> some figures being created. Um, what's been the reaction that you ha that you have um, hearing from fans since its release? Like that whole Santa art. Yeah. Thing. Oh boy, that's it's been great. <laughs> this is something like I've you know Damien and I have had to keep under wraps for about two years. We. We knew we were going to make a Christmas movie before um, Terrifier 2 even came out. So it's just, it's been really hard to keep this under wraps. I, I'm, I Like last year when uh, Terror Threads released that one Christmas Santa art shirt, that was before they even knew we were doing a Christmas movie. And so Damon and I are like, oh, wow, we have our fingers on the pulse here. And then like earlier this year, I was at a convention up in Canada and there was a guy that came up to me and he had a tattoo of Santa art on his leg before anybody knew we were doing this. It was just something that's like, I thought this would be cool. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Man. Oh, There's like all boy. of these art, Santa art vibes going out to people. Yeah. That, is, that is really wild. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it was like, wow, we 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 know what people want to see and it's it's i i'm i'm so excited for it because you this is the first time you've actually had like a a slasher series that's had a a christmas movie you know all the other ones you know it's like they keep in like the same especially halloween it's always on halloween or something like that so we we've never put art in a different type of holiday situation per se you know so I was like, ah, that's going to be a fun change of pace for things, I think. D definitely, like, kind of, again, tearing down a wall of something mm -hmm. that is kind of taboo. And, like, I mean, okay, we have had Christmas horror before, but we haven't had, yeah. like, terrify our Christmas horror. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Especially uh, this level of horror that we're going to be doing in this movie because we, we um, 
because we have a bigger budget this time, we can reach out to makeup teams to help us. And we, we've reached out to uh, Christian Tinsley's team out there in Los Angeles who you know, have over like 100 movies under their banner, yeah, I mean, like Passion of the Christ, stuff like that. So they are, um, I, I was out in LA uh, last week, when, of course, while we're recording this last week, but uh, um, I was working on another project I was out there briefly for, but I stayed an extra day because they needed me to go in there to Tinsley to do some makeup tests. So I got to see some of the stuff they're already working on for part three. And <laughs> it's it's going to be wild. Like, you know, Damien's really up in the ante on a lot of these kills. So I'm, I'm excited for it. That's kind of mind blowing because I, I remember when we were talking about Terrifier 2 and how like, oh, wow, you know, people haven't seen anything like this. And really when like when you saw it, that's a fact. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, was, it was like so above and beyond. And the fact that he's upping the ante from that. Yeah. It leaves you like, wow. Did you have <laughs> input in some of these ideas? Not really. I mean, Damien basically concocted all this himself. I mean, after he, I, I saw like, you know, the first draft of the script and stuff like that. He, you know, he reached out to like Lauren and I and in other members of the crew just you know for any ideas or anything like that just so we, we've kind of collaborated on a few little things here there's some little tweaks here or there you know some revisions and stuff like that but i mean besides that i mean it's this is all damien's baby this is yeah. he's got some crazy ideas for this thing things i never would have come up with and then it's things i've never seen in the christmas horror movie too because that's that's one thing we're like okay we gotta like look at other movies like this and say okay are we you know stealing anything from them because we want to do our own thing and uh, we, we've made some tweaks especially after the movie thanksgiving came out but um yeah it's <laughs> yeah i i, I we're, we're taking things to a new level in this one so it's yeah. oh man <laughs> in my mind i'm imagining okay and can we play like do maybe a terrifier terrifier two terrifier three like all in, in one big lump sum and have everybody together at monster mania or something and oh that would be fun. um <laughs> like a whole like watch the the first three films all in one you know big showing or something like that. <laughs> that would be cool but especially since there's a connecting story throughout the whole entire thing so that would totally work i mean yeah. I, I i will you know it's not really too much of a spoiler since you know about it by the end of you know part two with the extra scene during the credits but you know victoria is making a triumphant return in this one so. triumphant is is definitely a word that describes that in fact yeah um we last saw art's decapitated head in victoria's lap yeah and, uh, that <laughs> you know, it leads you to wonder can we expect a darker more vicious art the clown in the next film just the way that oh he's back definitely definitely <laughs> art's a lot more vicious in this one it's just yeah <laughs> it's he it, and i i think in this one too you see a lot of like how smart and clever art is because you know on halloween he can walk around as normal yeah. he because he, he can just blend in with everybody else in costumes and, yeah this time of year he's not able to do that as much so he's got to, he's got to find some creative ways around that which is which is cool which I, i'm very happy with and he's oh, and, and he, I, Hence, yeah and he, he's that, quite right <laughs> it, it, oh yeah and, and as you've seen in the past movie he's quite the tinkerer and so he he's coming up with some new toys for this one as well you know and you, you can't have a good christmas movie without some fun toys so i think those uh like flower sunglasses or those flower glasses from Terrifier mm -hmm. 2, seeing little babies wearing them. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> so cute. And hilarious. It's so cute. <laughs> it's, I, I, that's, I, that's one thing I have, I'm still flummoxed about. It, it, dealing with both Christmas and, you know, Terrifier, it's like my, my god sister recently just had a baby this year and she took her daughter to see Santa recently at the mall and her daughter freaked out at Santa just totally screaming yelling crying all that you know 
And I've always been expecting to have babies have that same reaction to me during the photo ops or at the table. Right. And not once has that ever happened. Like babies love Art the Clown. I, I don't know what it is, but they're so scared of Santa. And you would think it would be the other way around because Santa's a jolly fat man. You know, he's like, oh, he's so, he's cuddly. And you want, it's like, oh, he looks sweet. But they're scared of him. But Art is so gross and nasty and they're just like oh my god i love him i, I don't get it. i don't get it but I, i'm not complaining I've, I've had some great photo op moments with um families it's, you know i've some people are even like here hold my baby i'm like are you i, I don't want to drop <laughs> this child I, <laughs> well some of that is probably you david because you really do exude kindness and laughter and joy and <laughs> i'm sure the kids pick up on that through the makeup <laughs> I guess, you know, but I'm like, hey, do you know what I do in these movies? Because it's not just like babies, like e even little kids. I, I get so yeah. many little ones, especially little girls. Little girls love Art the Clown. They are not afraid of him. Little boys sometimes are a little bit wary of me when I'm in costume, but little girls are just like, oh my God, I love you. I've seen your movie four times. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and you have to kind of like be... Like, okay, let me wrap my head around that. Let's yeah, see. yeah. I'm like, I guess this is a much braver generation that's being brought up. So I, I guess that's good, cons considering all things going on. So I'm like, hey, good. I'm glad you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> we need that, kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the holiday season, of course, we couldn't go without mentioning the mean one. Um, yeah, exactly. In the high <laughs> Um, how did it feel becoming that iconic character? And can we expect a sequel? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you are following in the footsteps of like the voice of Boris Karloff. So, oh boy, I wish I had that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I also wish I had Thurl Ravenscroft's voice. I mean, boy, <laughs> which you know, a lot of people don't realize he was also the voice of Tony the Tiger. Ah. Too, so, yeah, they're great, you know. <laughs> That was him, but um, boy, it, it was fun returning to that character because a lot of people don't know it, but um, before I took on the role of Art, for five years, I toured with the national tour of How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical, and I was the understudy to Stephen Carl, who was Robbie Rotten from Lazy Town, and he was Art Grinch, and he was amazing. So, uh, you know, this is a character I, I know very well. I spent over 300 Christmases in Whoville, that's cool. So I, that's, that would be yeah, I, I, I know this. In this way. Oh, it was especially in a, a more unique way. So I was able to take what I had been doing for all those years and twist it in some fun, dark way. Because, you know, the mean one's not like terrifier level gore. Right, right. Or seriousness like that. You know, the mean one is pure camp. Right, exactly. We, we, we knew exactly what we were when we made that movie. We're like, we're just going to have fun and be silly and just parody you know that classic story and do our own fun little dark twist on it and it it was so much fun and i was like especially the day when i i got to um do the scene where i'm killing all the SantaCon people that was therapeutic for me because i when i waited tables here in new york city i used to have to work SantaCon every year and that was the most miserable day to wait tables ever because you're dealing with a bunch of drunk jerks that are just <laughs> all dressed up in Santa Claus outfits and puking everywhere and knocking things over and being obnoxious and just, ugh. So it, it was it was very therapeutic to go through and just kill all these people in that scene. I was like, oh, I loved it. I had some... Plus, it was me and a bunch of stunt actors. Right. And uh, I was like a kid in a candy store that day. I'm like, I get to do what today? I get to throw someone into a meat grinder and stab a Christmas tree with a candy cane and lasso people and throw people off tables. And so I'm like, this is great. I'm having a bar brawl. This is amazing. And you can see that uh, some of your impassion and having some fun of that all comes from your history with the Santa Con. So like, hey. Mm -hmm. Good oh yeah oh yeah that i love when i first read that scene i'm like oh this is brilliant i love this idea <laughs> and you brought all your personal uh experience with you yeah <laughs> that angst that built up angst <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny, speaking of, uh, you know, indie movies, I've spoken to a couple of uh, indie filmmakers 
-hmm. who very specifically have said, you know, we wanted to do something different. We didn't want it to be Terrifier. Terrifier is amazing. But it's like, in a way, uh, Terrifier 2 almost put this driving edge under indie filmmakers yeah. to open up their creativity from, from the people I've spoken to anyway. And well, I, which I love to hear. <laughs> I, that's what I was hoping was going to happen. I was, yeah. I was really hoping this was going to inspire a lot more people to keep doing what they're doing and try new things. And because like, uh, you know, when you look at it, all these horror franchises that we all know and love now all started as independent films. Exactly. Low budget independent films. And it's just like, you just never know. It's like horror is such a great genre for independent films because it can, it can launch so many things. And it's, a, it's, it's one of those genres where, you know, you're able to experiment and have that kind of freedom with, I mean, that's why we did not go with the Hollywood studios. I know there's that rumor going out there. There've been articles written like Hollywood pulled money from us or something I'm like, no, 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 no. That is not what happened in the least. It was basically the opposite of that. Damien was approached by all the Hollywood studios, like big name studios, the main ones. Everybody wanted a piece of the Terrifier pie, but they wanted all the control. And Damien knew that, you know, if he gave control to the studios, they would neuter what he wanted to do with this movie. And he's like, absolutely not. We, we can't sell out to the studio system for a bigger, you know, a bigger, not paycheck, but bigger budget. It's like, we got to stay true to what we are and have the freedom to do what we want to do. And that's why we stayed with uh, Cineverse for part three, because they were the ones that distributed us for um, part two. They didn't cut anything out of the movie. They, they believed in the concept of it. They're like, okay, we're going to put this out. We're just taking a big, huge gamble. We're going to put this thing out as it is and see what happens. And it paid off. It paid off big time. Yeah. So, like, why, why? If it's not broke, don't fix it. That's how I look at it. Right. And that's what we're. You know, I mean, yeah, we we could have had a bigger budget going with any of the Hollywood studios, but we wouldn't have the freedom to do what we want to do. And that's what's really important. And it's like it's not the it's not a big budget that makes a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, as as has been seen with the new Godzilla movie that just came out, it was like right. it's. It was only made for a few million, and it's doing gangbusters. And it's like you don't have to have a, a huge, giant, you know, Marvel-sized budget to make a good film. And that's 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 what we're doing. It's like we're just we're making the movie. We have a bigger budget, definitely. Now we can afford, you know, a bigger crew and stuff like that. But we're still staying true to what we want to do. We're staying true to the independent film spirit. And I, going back to the original question, it's like, I, I'm happy that we're inspiring other people to do the same, but I've also noticed that it's affecting the mainstream horror movies as well. I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. people are like, you know, taking notice and they're like, oh, wow, maybe we should start experimenting more and keep pushing the envelope against them playing it safe. Uh, it was, it was mind-blowing to me earlier this year when the new Saw movie came out and there were s several articles comparing Saw to us which was mind-blowing because when we were filming part one especially Damien and I were constantly talking about you know other independent films that became mainstream horror movies and Saw was one of the big ones we talked about and, and James Wan and what that all did for James Wan career wise and everything like that. And it's so to be able to be compared to some, a, a film series that has inspired us was mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Same thing with uh, Thanksgiving. I was like, you know, Eli Roth is another great inspiration for us. And it's like, I, I was, you know, it's like, I was blown away. I loved, I love, I haven't been able to see the new Saul movie yet. I'm, I'm, it's on my list, but I, I did see Thanksgiving and I freaking loved it. Loved it. <laughs> now you do have a couple of films in post-production. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to ask you about a couple of those. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. What can you tell us about The Dead Place? Oh, The Dead Place. Yes, that's, um, I filmed that earlier this year and 
out there in California, I was only on set for just a few days, you know, like, so that was very, very quick film for me to do, but I did so much in those few days and I have a fun little role in it. I'm not like the main lead or anything like that, but I, I ha it's, it's a fun role. And I, I, I play the new kid in that and he's, he's a, a, a child murderer and he's a horrible, vile character and I get to talk for once too. So that's been fun. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I, I am hoping that's going to be well received by everybody. We had a lot of fun. We had a very talented team involved with that. You know, a lot of passionate people. I'm looking forward to seeing that mm -hmm. myself. I uh, did a little bit with the Indiegogo and mm -hmm. got thank you pictures thank you. of the new kid. And yay! Uh, <laughs> in fact, I was looking for it's it. Me. I hang it up, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Any idea when yep. that one is supposed to come out? Sometime, I hope, next year. I have no okay. idea. Yeah. And the last one, which is one that I'm actually very excited about and hopefully we'll be talking to a lot of people about, mm -hmm. is, is Stream. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a good one. I, I I don't know the exact release date for that, but I'm thinking probably going to be around spring or summer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's – I mean, we did that – bunch of us from the terrifier films made that together you know our team you know like the levies and damien and you know the fuzz on the lens guys and all that you know yeah. we all made this together but we hired a bunch of you know alumni from the horror world to be involved in this as well which was an amazing experience in itself to be on set with all these people i grew up watching i mean like we have like felissa rose dave sheridan daniel roebuck Danielle Harris, Dee Wallace, Jeffrey Combs, Tony Todd. Yeah. There's so many other people, uh, uh, so many other people that I can't even name yet that yeah. are yeah. a part of this cast. And just just to be among them is just wow. This is crazy. It's like the Expendables version of a horror movie, and it's and it's such a, a fun movie too. It's a fun concept that's you know can be made into a whole film series as itself. And I, I play one of the killers in it, and it's just like the whole concept behind it is very fun. It's, it's, I think people are really going to enjoy it. I think that's going to be another one of those uh, follow up, can't wait to see it, then can't wait to see the next one kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. What I am feeling about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you were mentioning a little bit before we hit recording that you're going to be attending a convention in your hometown. Um, yeah. So where is that convention and what is that show? Yeah, that's a uh, Huntsville Horror Con is in the, the first weekend or so of January in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama. It's their first horror con they've done. So I'm like, that's oh. kind of cool. You know, I, I haven't been home in five years. So it's, it's basically the last time I went home was the month that uh, month after Terrifier 1 released on Netflix. So it's just a lot's changed since then. So it's going to be very interesting to go back and you know see how things are now you know it's like it's kind of cool kind of cool very very cool so any of you guys out in the alabama way or willing to travel in january want to head down there and see uh, see david yeah. go do yeah. it and then there's nothing else really going on that weekend might as well exactly <laughs> and then after that you have a little bit of break until you start filming exactly exactly I know, <laughs> oh we can't get that right now as we're recording you know they're in the process of casting everybody so i've that's exciting for me it's like ooh, who who are my new victims going to be this time around and stuff like that who, who would i get to play with this time around so the old friends and the new victims oh yeah yeah because that, that's that's going to be fun it's going to be a lot of fun and i mean, of course lauren and elliot are coming back as well as you know samantha's victoria so it's just like it's gonna be it's gonna be fun and then of course they recently announced you know chris jericho's back as well so that's gonna be it's great yeah we got to finish that scene so <laughs> absolutely absolutely get the whole family back together oh yeah okay and you guys out there you know we'll see you at the uh at the movies and we'll see what kind of new dastardly deeds <laughs> Art the Clown is up to. Yes. David, thank you so much for joining us. It is always so much a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Ah, yes. Pleasure's mine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>